Hello everyone! Welcome to Cooking Curves Coding Class. Today, I'm going to show you how to make your own API using only Google Sheets for free. And no, I'm not going to use one of those annoying websites like Sheetsu or Sheety, which are slow and they are unreliable. You'll get errors, like you'll get a 403 or a 503 like almost every time you request it and they take like half an hour to load and they make you want to pay them. No, no, no. This is built into Google, it's free, it's easy to get set up, and it's super fast because it's on Google server. So here's just a nice little spreadsheet I made to demonstrate this. And now, here's a little bit of code, and here is an API, which gives us the data in a format that we can read pretty easily with JavaScript. And we can even set it up to search, question mark Q equals, let's search for JK rolling and once it loads we only get that one result that matched the name and you can set this up to have like more smart search kind of thing this thing has to match exactly but you can also set it up to add stuff to the spreadsheet you can set it up to have a post request I'm not going to show you all of that stuff but this will be the basics and this should get you well on your way to setting up your own database without a real database system. So let's get started. All right. So to get started, you've got your document here. You've got some data, you know, something to access. Then go to Tools and click on Script Editor. And now we are given this blank editor. It's not the best editor, but it'll do the trick. So delete everything that's there and make a function called setup. This one does it does you don't have to call it setup, but it's nice to know what it's it's going to set everything up. And then inside this function, and by the way, this is just JavaScript essentially. It's JavaScript with some extra APIs built in, that's all. So we're going to make a variable called doc var oops, that's all, not all caps. var doc equals spreadsheet with a capital S spreadsheet app with a capital A dot get and then here it's gonna give us some options just go down to get active spreadsheet that's what we want semicolon then we're going to do properties service with a capital P prop properties and also a capital S in service properties service dot get script properties right here it popped up dot get properties oh no sorry dot set property and then for a key here we're gonna open quotes and we'll just do key and value will do doc dot get id open parentheses close parentheses that's it for this function what this function will do is it'll ask for permission to edit the document and access our google account so then just save this i'll call it api video 2 and then we're just going to hit run run function setup now it's going to ask for some permission so click on review permissions it's going to ask you to sign in and then it's going to tell you that the app isn't verified that's fine because we're making the app click on advanced and click on go to the API video 2 or whatever you called it then it just says it wants to edit create and delete spreadsheets that's great we're probably only going to be editing it, but that's fine. Hit allow. And it's done. And then you'll get an email from Google. Don't worry about that. Now, this is where it gets actually interesting. We're going to make a function. And we have to call it, you have to call it this. It's like a built-in thing. Do get. And it's do get with a capital G 
open parentheses, and then give it the parameter request. That is where the request is going to come in through. Then, inside of here, we just got to run a couple things to get us access to the document, and then we can work on returning the data. So, let's make a variable called query. Var query equals request dot parameter dot q. So if you do in the URL at the end of it, you do question mark q equals whatever. The whatever here is going to be whatever you gave it. And if you give it any parameter like poop or I don't know, whatever, doesn't matter. It'll be request dot parameter dot whatever you called the parameter. And that's that's great. So you can have as many of these as you want, doesn't matter. Then we're gonna do var parameters equals two, because if you look at my spreadsheet here, I've got two different columns, name and description. If you've got ten, then you want to do ten. It doesn't matter, you just should have that there. Then var sheet name equals and in quotes the name of your spreadsheet. So the default name here in Google Sheets is Sheet1 with a capital S and I haven't changed that so I'm just gonna call it Sheet1 with a capital S. Oops I didn't put a semicolon at the end of that last line there. Probably doesn't matter because this is based on Chrome and it's smart but it's good to good to be careful. Then var doc equals and then we can do spread sheet app the same way we did down there dot open by ID and then in parentheses properties service with a capital P and a capital S property service dot get script properties right there dot get property and in quotes key because that's what we called the property down here you can call it whatever you want it doesn't matter and then semicolon at the end of the line now we're almost ready to start manipulating the data now make a variable called sheet var sheet equals doc dot get sheet by name get sheet by name and then we'll do sheet name this way if you ever rename your sheet you can just change this here and not have to worry about where you put that in the code then var last row equals sheet dot get last row. Very simple. I guess we could do get last column for parameters too, but it doesn't matter. Now, let's make a variable called rows. Var rows. This is how we're going to be manipulating the data. Equals open square brackets, close them. So it's just an empty array that we're going to be filling out in a second. Then make a variable called range var range, this is a whole ton of variable making, but we have to do it, equals sheet dot get range, and then delete all that default stuff that it gives us, and do 2 comma 1, so 2 means that it's not including this first row, which is just name and description. If you do want it to include it, then you'll make that one. But anyway, two comma one comma last row comma parameters. So that will be the range. Then we we'll make another variable var values equals range dot Oops, dot get values with a capital V. Dot get values. Open parentheses, close parentheses. Now, this is technically data, 
right here, this values variable, but it's not formatted very well. So it'll be difficult to manipulate when you access the API. And so we're going to convert it into something a little nicer. So we'll make a for loop. For, open parentheses, var row in values, oops, close parentheses, open curly brackets, close them, enter, you know the drill, you know, it's not that hard to make a for loop. Rows dot push, and then in parentheses, an empty array here. We need to have this so that we can do this next thing. We're gonna make another for loop inside this for loop. Var, oops, for, var call in values in square brackets row, close square brackets, close parentheses, open curly brackets, and then in here, we're gonna do rows in square brackets row, close square brackets, dot push, open parentheses, values in square brackets row, close square brackets, in square brackets, call, close square brackets, close parentheses. And basically what this will do is it'll set it up so that each, each row will be its own value in the array, and then inside it there will be an array with the two values of the columns, rather than a whole mess of everything. Great. Now, after this for loop, we can actually return some stuff. So, if, in parentheses, query, exclamation mark equals null, so if query exists, basically, open curly brackets, and in here we'll just do var rows to return equals rows dot filter a equals sign greater than sign a in square brackets zero is equal to query. So basically if you do question mark q equals something then it will return to you the row with the same name of whatever you searched for. This is a very basic search, but you can make it more advanced if you want. I did that for my podcast app. And then after this, we can just do return content service with a capital C and a capital S content service dot create text output and then in parentheses, JSON with a capital J S O N N dot stringify. And then we're going to open curly brackets, close them, and then in quotes we'll do data, close quotes, colon rows to return, comma, error, close quotes, colon false just just so we can tell it that there was no error then outside of all of these parentheses here we'll do dot set mime type and then we'll do content service oops content with a capital C service with a capital S dot mime type gives us to it there dot J S O N with a capital J S O N N. Then give it a semicolon at the end. So basically this converts the data into JSON. Now we can copy this return here, and at the very bottom after the if statement, we will paste it, and then instead of doing rows to return, we'll just do rows. That way if you don't search for anything, it'll give you the whole document instead of giving you a big HTML page that says this script didn't return anything but it ran so you know yeah just just do that now save the file we're almost done then go up here to publish and you'll think oh we're making an API click on deploy as API executable no 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 deploy as web app click on that 
scroll back, and then make sure that the project version is set to new. You have to do this every time you publish. And then who has access to this app? Make sure that it's anyone, even anonymous. Otherwise, you'll have to do a whole bunch of authentication stuff, and it's complicated. Now, just hit deploy, and it'll give you a link here. So let's copy this link, paste it into a new tab, and here's all of our data if we don't give it a query. And then if we paste and go question mark Q equals search for John Smith, John Smith, press enter, we get just the row with John Smith. So as you can see, it works. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Buy my merch. And remember to look both ways before crossing.